Hi, this is Kendra over at Pencil and Pigment, and today I wanted to do a watercolor sketchbook tour. And I wanted to first talk about what I used, what I own, what I like, <laughs> what I compromise with, maybe. Um, I did this watercolor with my Schmink Hodrum Aquarell, and I keep looking up pronunciations of this, and that was as accurate as I could find. So, I hope that doesn't bother you. If you know a better way of saying that, please put that down below. I have the 36 pan set. It is very expensive. My recommendation for this, if you've moved past uh, the student grade watercolors, is to start an Amazon wish list, put that on there, and check on it once a week because the price fluctuates. I believe as of right now, it's about 230 to 250 US dollars. At the time, I, rec I received this as a gift four years ago, but it, was, it had dropped down to $150. So the price really fluctuates. Um, one of the shippers dropped their price and I ordered this directly from the UK. I did not get this from the United States because it would be so much more expensive. I take it out of its huge tin. Its huge tin is clunky and I don't use the mixing tray. It's too much, it's too loud. You're supposed to use porcelain for watercolors. And these I can leave on here and reactivate with water a year later and they're perfectly fine. Um, I bought this. I'll link all these products down below from Blick and some of these are from Amazon. And you can compare and contrast. I believe this is $8. I want to get a second one of these because what I'm using is my travel palette. And this is a dollar, a cheapy $1 one that I take with me camping and hiking and backpacking. And I ran out of space on this one. So I think I'll get a second one. And I like these because they're small and I can move them around. And again, I take, I take it out. I did add gold and silver. Um... And the brushes I used were the Windsor Newton Cotman because those are a fine little brush and I'm super, super rough on everything. So I like buying a less expensive brush because they fall apart, even though I clean them and preserve them and do all the things. This is a Paul Rubens 100% cotton watercolor sketchbook. This was my first time using it. It's 20 page, so it's a 40 front and back. Um, I like it and I don't like it. So I like that it's all cotton. It's not that cellulose wood pulp, but it's fuzzy. It's like, it's not like arches. Arches is a very tight weave and this feels loose, almost closer to the homemade watercolor paper option for some reason. So what I did was I took the Scotch 3M tape that's for delicate surfaces and I put a band below because I wanted everything to line up on the same line on every single page for flow. And it did rip this paper. So I think this would work fine on wood pulp and cellulose, but on this, because it's too loose and fuzzy, I mean, this really attracts pet hair, like a lot. Um, it just, it, it tore a little bit. My goal for this was to work on things I never work on, which are landscapes, portraits. I watercolor basically once a month, or one month out of the year, which is World Watercolor Month, the month of July. And then I'm always like, one, I need to get better, and two, why don't I do this more? And the, the answers in those thought processes, I need to do it more if I wanna get better at it, and I just don't. So maybe I need to just start doing more mixed media and working in the watercolor sets that I have. So this is what I came up with. My other goal was to use all the colors of the spectrum. So start with some colors and keep moving around. Are you able to see both these on here? Can you look up here and see if both these are in view? Thank you. Okay, thank you. I have my timer making sure I don't go over. And what this is, because this is 40 pages and I'm squeezing it, I wanted to use this for the entire 31 day. I will do a single page 
and then a double page presentation. So I have a single, single, single of landscape and there she is a double page where people are a part of their landscapes. They are their home. And here I'm going into reds I never use, but, but I love them. And then I wanted to try doing hands. We are a part of our earth. Those are some of my thought processes on this. Um, and again, these are single days. And then I go into a double. Sort of what if your spirit animal is more of a landscape? What if the love of your life is more of a location? That's sort of what I was thinking when I was doing this. And maybe the pandemic has made us all a little odd <laughs> because we can't travel. But maybe it hasn't. Here's my forest, the May green. I go with that green a lot. Maybe we are made of trees. I like the surrealism of this one. And why I never use this colors more, I don't know, but gosh, these are bright and fun, aren't they? And I tried to incorporate things throughout every picture, so I have birds. I get into my ocean, my sea, the place that's my meditation location. It puts me at ease. So I tried to put birds in all of them. Whether you can see them or not, some of them are really pale and tiny. And I think we are made of cities. There's hopes and dreams associated with that. So I wanted to incorporate not just nature, but some of the things we make, architecture. There we go. That's the end. This is my watercolor sketchbook tour. I did all this for the month of July of 2021. Um, I hope everyone has a great day and I will talk to you all tomorrow for the final day of July Vlogmas. Yeah. And let me know what you're working on if you're interested in watercolor. I originally got started with the Windsor Newton Cotman. And I think for sketchbooks and for camping and for travel, the little tiny $20 Cotman trays, they're great for kids that show aptitude and interest or people that just want to learn. You don't have to rush out and buy the most expensive watercolor on the market unless this is something that you know you love. I do commissions, I do watercolor commissions for people, and that is why I have this watercolor set, but I wanted to improve some of the things I never do because I never do landscapes. So that was something that I was interested in. And I would say maybe some of the weaknesses of this for me personally are that there aren't enough purples. There's only one. So I end up using some tubes of dark dioxin purple and I'll link some of those purples below. Um, there's too many reds and too many yellows for me and I could have used another bright fuchsia and another dark purple I think personally but for this set for commissions for doing what people are interested in for their interests not my personal one the set works great and I've replaced a few of these colors several times. Um, I'll link this product too. This is like a water dropper. It holds one fluid ounce or 30 milliliters of water. And I got this on Amazon and I just drop drops on here to activate it. I would say if you're using um, a student grade watercolor, they take a little longer to activate and liquefy and get prepped. But other than that, they're absolutely fine. I just, there are tons of watercolor tutorials on YouTube that are free. Your local library has watercolor tutorials. Um, just practice, 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 and see if you genuinely love it or if you just love drawing or if you just love pastels. Um, it's a great hobby 
if it's something that you'll keep up with, but before rushing out and spending hundreds of dollars, try some budget stuff first and see how you like it and see if you even want to upgrade it. You may never need to upgrade. The, the, I still have my Cotman's and I've gone through a couple of those and I love them. I take them traveling. So I hope this helps. I hope you have a great Friday. I hope you have some maybe fun, low-key, relaxing plans for the weekend. And I will talk to you all tomorrow. Bye.